as far as the hay goes right now, you look at it, it looks awful dry, but the moisture stays underneath in the bottom. Can't bale hay over 12% moisture. Oh yeah, it's terrible. It is really hard. You gotta kill the fields completely. About every five years, you gotta replant them. Because hay, the seeds and stuff, are only good for about five years and you'll start losing production. See that one field over here, I got 700 bales off this 12 acres over here for one cutting. So the next year I get Six, six something. And the next year after that, it, starts, it just keeps dropping. When it gets down to where you're losing about 200 bales, you might as well, you'll start losing money after a while. So you might as well just kill it, start over again, or replant it. I get irrigation pipes up there with uh, gates in them. I probably spend every morning, I probably spend two and a half hours, I suppose, Checking the water lines, it's coming in where the, where the water comes in and making sure all the water's coming down right. And then when it goes to an open ditch over here, make sure you have a bunch of junk in it. I got screens over, I got to clean screens and stuff so I don't get into my, my irrigation lines down there. See, I, can, I only got so much water to use. I called the other day the ditch rider and asked him how much water I had left, which was 60. I got 60% less, so I've only used 40%. And most of the time, it used to be, I never put any water on first cutting. We had enough uh, spring rains and stuff that kept them fields just as damp as could be. I didn't have to, but anymore, last couple of years, we've been having more water on every year, every spring, more water and more water. So it's getting worse and worse all the time. The elk last year just killed me. They went through my all my fences over here and tore my fences up from one end to the other, and they just tore my brand new field. I planted this field last year, and the elk got into this one last fall, just tore my field all to pieces. Well, they're not only eating it, but when an elk, when a five, six hundred pound elk steps in a hole in a, in a plowed field that's been already been plowed that deep, you know what kind of hole he's going to make? Big. And when you try to put water down it, it's going to go in the hole. I had. Five big bulls, the smallest, the smallest one was four, four point. The biggest one was a seven point. But they was really fun to watch because they'd get out to get to fighting and playing and they'd be banging it against the horns and against each other and it was really fun to watch them. I've got pictures of, of uh, six bulls or seven bulls right next to Shell, Shell service station in Cleveland. Well, the price is a big thing. <laughs> Whether you're gonna get rid of it or not. Haying is just like playing cards, gambling. Same thing. Because the weather, you the weather is everything. If the weather don't if the weather catches you, we've lost whole fields of hay and we couldn't get hardly nothing out of them because it rained for two days on it or something. 
It just ruins them. It's hard to get it dry again. You know all those fluffery machines that fluff it all up? You know, we, we fluffed them fields five or six times, John's field and my field both, and we couldn't, we couldn't get it dry. We got a machine, uh, a deal we stick down inside the bale and tell how hot that bale is before we, what percentage of moisture is in it. Well, we do it for a, part of a row, we'll skip, take a four-wheeler or something and skip down a row, you know, and, and make sure it's all, lit, then go to the next row and skip down them. It, it's about that long. And it's got a gauge on it that tells you how much. They're about $250 a piece of gauges <laughs> for those machines, but they're pretty, they're pretty neat to have. Oh, I got yellow jackets all over. Yellow jackets are terrible. Yellow jackets get into machinery, see? You got a yellow machine, that's where a yellow jacket's gonna build a nest, in a yellow machine, bright yellow machine. I bet you that old backhoe I get out here, I bet it's got two or three nests in it right now. In, in parts of the tractor, they get inside the part tractor and build them. I bet you already this year we've went through at least a case of wasp and hornet killer already this year. My wife gets done way more than I do. She's sweeter than I am, I guess. <laughs> Because I, I get stung two or three times a year. She might get stung eight or ten times a year. She always gets stung more than me. I keep telling her she's sweeter than I am. <laughs> People die sitting around in chairs. Get up and do something. Don't sit in the chairs all the time. I, right now, I can go and eat dinner, eat lunch, and I'll get sleepy and sit down and take a nap, and then... And when I first started doing it, it was only 15, 20 minutes, and I was up going somewhere. Depends on what I'm doing. If I'm doing hazy, I, won't, I will not take a break. I'll, I'll eat lunch, maybe a quick lunch, and I'm back out there again. Because it's got to be done. So I just learned to keep going, because when you slow down, you're going to get slower. And when you get slower, you're going to quit. So I just don't slow down. I uh, took my physical last year. I take one every year. And... Uh, when I started to leave, I said, well, what kind of crap stories are you going to tell me this time when I should be doing or shouldn't be doing or something like that? He said, Ralph, I'll tell you what. You just keep doing what you've been doing because you ain't going to get any better than what you already are. He said, you're doing just fine. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it, he says. So, all right, see you next year. I was into it, into my, into my, <laughs> my physical. I started with horses when I was probably four or five years old. My dad loved horses and he, was, he had a horse around all the time. And I can't remember what horse he had, but I can remember the first horse that West Kids rode was Tex, with big white gilding. And the only way us kids could get on him was to put a handful of grain down on the ground. He'd put his head down, we'd swing our legs over his over his head, he'd raise his head up and would slide on his back. That's how we got on him. And we, we'd get on our horse, my dad would sit in the, in the house and just, no bridles, no saddles, no nothing, but and he'd just walk around inside the corral, just leading us kids, play with him, be two or three kids on him, and he'd just walk around inside the corral. And that's how we got started playing with horses, and, and I got more used to him. And then dad started taking me up in the mountains, so fishing holes, you know, in different lakes and stuff. And when I was probably six, he started taking me up in the hills, and then my brothers and sisters grew up, well, he'd take, you know, take them too, so that's about how we got, and I always liked horses. I mean, after that, I rode horses in the play days, and I rode rodeos and ro for junior rodeo, and junior, junior rodeos. I rode bareback. Oh, probably right after I met my wife and decided to get married. <laughs> she said, no, I don't think you've been riding rodeos, so. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but you are not going to be married and expect everything to go smooth because it won't. It's, you're going to have up days and down days, and that's just the way marriage is. You just got to put up with some of the stuff. Well, she has to put up with some of the stuff that I do, and I got to put up with some of the stuff that she does.
We get a lot of birds around here, different birds. And uh, then we trying to decide it's kind of expensive to feed all the birds. Man, we bought bird feed after brown. <laughs> all summer long, we buying bird feed during all winter, you know. So we slowed down on that. We don't buy them. How many birds we will? We'll feed brown birds all the time. But oh, we've got we've got uh, yellow fences and we've got red fences and we've got uh, uh, gross beaks and we've got oh I I don't know Jim, but I've got a book and I've got markers on what birds that I've seen here, because every time we see a different one, we'll get a look at that book, see where it's at. And I've got markers almost complete every page of that book. They come through at certain times, it might be around here for a week, then they're gone. The next spring, you'll see them come through, same thing. And it's got to be the same one so they know where they're going, you know, or something. But uh, it's unreal how many birds is around you if you start paying attention and looking. There's a lot of birds in this this valley. I love those grandkids. I went to almost every sport they've been to. If I could get to it, I went to it. Basketball, baseball, soccer, football. Both of them played baseball. Both of them played basketball. And I, I've been just about, I wore, just about wore a car completely out. Following those kids around, clear to Pasco and Yakima and all over the place, watching sports. I love to watch them play sports. It's really, that was really fun for me.